I got this new telly for the studio as I'm working on a few different videos and the TV is incredible. We're getting a sound system fitted in as well, but something else was missing. This is the LightMe Fantasy 3 interactive mood lighting for your TV. And it's the first HDMI 2.1 sync box, which supports TVs from 55 inches all the way to 90 inches. I've used Philips Hue before at home and sure, it does the job, but there are a few features in this kit from LightMe that makes it a much better option for my setup. Not to mention the pricing difference as well. I'm Alex and I do down to earth tech videos. So let's have a look at what's in the box. Okay. We have the Neo3 Sync box, which is capable of handling 8K at 60 Hertz or 4K at 120 Hertz. This is awesome because that is an 8K TV I've got behind me, but more about the Sync box later on. We also get the power adapter, of course, the AK HDMI cable, the light strip itself with 150 LEDs, about 72 per meter, which is great, and some fixing clips, which will make more sense when I show you how the setup is done. The installation is very simple, but there are a couple of gotchas here that you need to be aware of, so don't ignore this bit. You basically go around the TV, sticking the light strip, starting from the bottom left or the bottom right, to decide where to start, have a quick look at where the cables will end up, and make a decision based on your setup. For me, it was better to start on the bottom left. Then, using the 3M stickers, just go around the telly, leaving three centimeters from the edge of the TV. This little gap to the edge actually worked out great for my TV because it has some vents here, so it was nice to avoid that. Around the corners, you can use the clips that they provide to keep the cables nice and tidy at the back. The plastic clips have really strong stickers on them too, so it helps the strip itself from coming off. Once the strip is installed, plug in the USB cable into the Neo3 sync box. Then you connect the AK HDMI cable that came in the kit to the TV's HDMI port. Now, here's the first gotcha that I mentioned earlier. Most TVs will have an ARC HDMI port or auto return channel. This just means that the auto signal can be sent back to the transmitter, but we're not gonna be using that. The sync box doesn't support ARC, so avoid using that altogether. Just find a HDMI port that is not ARC and everything should work okay later on. Then you connect all your other devices like your TV box, your PlayStation or Xbox or your Switch. So the sync box is basically a hub really. You connect the sync box to the TV, then your devices to the sync box, and that's how the sync box will know how to synchronize the lights to whatever is showing on the display. As I said, this could be your PlayStation, your Xbox, Nintendo Switch, or if you have your TV box like Hulu or Sky here in the UK, as long as it's HDMI, it will sync up. And that's the installation bit done, but we're not fully done yet. Before you do anything else, we need to get the app. And here's the second gotcha that I mentioned, which is something that will save you a lot of frustration. Most Wi-Fi routers these days, or routers, <laughs> will support dual bands, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. The Lightme Neo3 sync box supports 2.4 gigahertz. So in my case, I needed to connect the phone to that 2.4 gigahertz first, to make sure that the setup worked. Once you've set it all up, you can connect your phone as normal back to the five gigahertz network. The setup itself is very straightforward. The app is very intuitive with these three tabs at the bottom for the different modes. And the control power here at the top, where you can control the power and the brightness of the strip, including the degree of the diffusion here of the light strip. Just going through the different modes, the first mode you've got here is sync mode. Here's where your HDMI devices will show up and you can via the app itself, switch between them. It's very easy to switch as well, either via the app or via the physical switch. I prefer the app because you can just click on the HDMI input that you want. So right now I'm on the game and just have a look. And I'm gonna press now. It's gonna go blank for a few seconds while it settles. But once it settles, it's very quick to synchronize it. You can see the lighting. Cool, now I'm gonna switch back to the gaming. I just pressed it now. It flickers for a couple of seconds. There you go. Then you've got music mode, which will let you choose the type of music you're listening to, and the lights will change based on the tunes that you're playing. So that's quite a nice mode as well. You could be listening to music while you're studying or just chilling, or you know, I can see this being quite useful, uh, something like a dinner party or something, you live in the background, and you get that mood lighting, depending on what you're listening to, which is quite nice. And finally, you have scene mode. If you're just watching something like YouTube, Netflix or Disney Plus via the smart TV apps, only a few TVs will support the sync. Mainly because this is not a HDMI signal, right? It's only part of the smart TV software that you've got. And I think it's quite nice as well to have this scene so that when you're watching just the smart TV stuff like Netflix or YouTube, you can use this scene to like put a rainbow on and let's have a look at what that looks like. I can put a fire mode. 
So the scene mode will come in handy for those situations and you can choose then between these 12 modes here, really cool. But that's not all, you can also control the lights via Alexa, Google Assistant or Samsung Smart Things, which is great. The functionality via Smart Assistant will be slightly limited, but a nice feature to have anyway. And before I show you the experience in different modes, just a quick reminder to give this video a thumbs up and if you like my stuff, it would be awesome if you subscribed. I'm here at least once a week with a new tech video for you. Well, you heard him. Right, once you've got it all working and installed, it's just an amazing experience. Even though my wall here in the studio is black and the TV is actually quite far away from the wall as well, this is gonna be even better for you if your setup is closer to the wall. As you can see here, let me show you. My telly is way you know, too far away from the wall here. But despite the wall being black and this distance between the telly and the wall, I'm still getting a really immersive experience despite that. So if you've got a, like a white background or a lighter background and the telly even closer to the, to the wall, you're gonna get a better experience than I'm getting. Whether I'm playing a racing game or Call of Duty, you know, something quite fast as well that you think the light is not gonna be able to cope. It's really quite amazing how fast the lights respond to whatever scene is being displayed. It's not only changing colors as well very quickly, which is amazing, but in the darker areas, you can see sometimes it dims really completely or, you know, it just com goes completely black. One thing that I did find a little bit annoying is that it won't turn off when the TV goes into standby mode, which is, you know, pretty much every single TV in the world, right? but it's easy enough to turn off via the app or via the switch itself. The links for the light meet kit is in the description and the pinned comment as well. The performance of the light strip, as I said, is really great. It really changes the color in sync without any delays whatsoever. The transition between colors is excellent. And regardless of the content you're watching or games that you're playing, this really makes for a fantastic experience. The darker your room, the better, of course, but I've enjoyed this here in this space, even in full daylight, like right now. So no issues there really from a brightness perspective. Changing between HDMI inputs is also super easy. And whilst the transition is happening between one HDMI input and another, you will get the strip lights you know, kind of going white for a little bit, for a few seconds before it syncs up. And then you will kind of, you know, start syncing up as well. I do love that the sync box has four HDMI inputs, which is plenty really for a lot of setups out there and it being HDMI 2.1, we're getting the best possible refresh rates as well without any lags. This is a big deal when comparing with other options out there in the market. Some even require a camera to sync up, so you know that could be quite a messy setup. And when you take into account the pricing as well, it makes this a fantastic buy, really. I will be reviewing this AK TV soon. It's a beast, by the way. But while you wait for that, I've also put together some playlists here for you. And if you've seen those ones already, there's some videos here that you can watch as well. And I hope to see you there. Bye.